he shared with you all that he can do. What he shared with me. Would you stand with me for the reading of the word of God? 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17 and 18. Very familiar passage. I, when I start it, y'all can finish it. You know it. I never asked him. I never asked God. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17. I never asked him. Can I read it for you? What the hell? Especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. What the scripture says. Yeah, yeah. Thou shalt not master the ox that treadeth out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his reward. Yeah. Y'all heard that. But since he brought it up, I had to ask him. I said, well, why is that so? Why do you think like that? And his response to me was because they are holy men. And they've been called by God to, to live a holy life. And I said, that, that's your reason.
to write letters. I mean, and when people just need stuff, when people can't make their rent, when people are having problems with their bills, if he can't get it from the church, oftentimes he go in his own pocket to, to help meet needs of other people. I said, I ain't even got to the preaching and the teaching yet. I said, when he had, I said, every week he's got to preach. And I said, I don't know if you know this, but you know, you, you just don't get up and speak. You got to spend some time in study. You got to spend some time in prayer. And just as much time you spend in study, you got to spend that much time on your knees asking God to give you revelation or give you illumination about the revelation. I said, then you got to turn around and teach. And I said, and then you have to be everything to everybody. And he looked at me and he said, And you know, Pastor Perkins, I really wasn't mad with him because he's on church. I really didn't have a problem with him because, you know, he really don't know the Lord. He, he, he don't spend time in church. He, I mean, I am I can bet you $100 right now. He ain't in nobody's church today. But where I have problem was, there are people who are born again. People who are in church think just like this fellow thing. There are people who've been recipients of the ministry who yeah. think like he thinks. There are people yeah. who, who have come and asked for prayer but still think like he thinks. There have been people who needed help but still think like he thinks. There have been people who he had to go to the jail or the courthouse with but still think like he thinks. Yeah. So if you will, allow me to bring you up to speed because we hopped in the yeah. middle of a conversation. You know, the theme of this book, First Timothy, deals with public worship, how the organized body ought to act when they come together. Yeah. He, in chapter 2, he says, when the organized body come together, he says, I would that men everywhere would lift up holy hands without wrath and doubt. And when the organized body come together. He said, he, he, tells, he tells Timothy that you should preach no other gospel than this gospel when the organized body comes together. And then here in chapter 5, he deals with the provisions of widows. Because, you know, there was no governmental assistance back then. You know, if you were a widow, if the next of kin didn't take you in marriage, you were in pretty bad shape. You know, there, there wasn't no social security for, for widows back then. There wasn't no program that took care of widows back then. And so he says, since there ain't no program that did it, because the program didn't come until Acts chapter 6. He said, when widows are in trouble, he said, you got to take care of us, not only widows. Yeah. He says, I would. He says, that, he says, he says, thou shalt not muzzle the ox of them that tread it out the corn. He says, not only do I need you to take care of widows, but you need to be able to take care of the man of God. And so this morning, for a few minutes, I invite you to travel with me as we peruse the parameters of the text. And can I just show you what God showed me in the passage? Got one question. Are y'all going to walk with me? First of all, I want to suggest my understanding this morning. I want you to know that God's desire for the man of God. The Bible says, let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor. He says, let the elders, the presbyteros, he says, let the elders, it's akin to the word bishop, episcopos, he says, let the elders, it's also akin to the word overseer, priestimate, let the elders that rule well. He says, let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor and rule is prosistomy, which literally means the cross, which means to stand before. He says, let the one who stands before the organized body who rules well be counted worthy of double honor. Right. That this word prosistomy also means first in rank. He says, let him that rule well or who lead well, who, who leads the way God says he ought to lead, let him be counted worthy. 
birthday of the Lamb. Let the one who has been guiding God's people in the way that God wants them to go be counted worthy of double honor. Let the one who has been leading God's people down the path that God has designated for their lives, let him be counted worthy of double honor. Now, can I say something to you? He, can, I, can I just let you know that the fact that he rules well does not excuse or does not dismiss the idea that sheep won't go astray. Right. <laughs> the fact that he rules well doesn't mean that sheep won't do what sheep do. Right. Sheep will get lost. Sheep will get sheep will not only get lost, but sheep won't follow because sheep are not too small. Right. In fact, let me prove my point. Have you ever noticed you do not see sheep in the circus? You can take a dog around the corner, he'll find his way back home. You can take a cat on the other side of the city, it'll find his way back. You, you can take a horse on the other side of the state, and somehow he'll navigate his way back home. You, you can take birds on the other side of the country, but somehow they'll navigate their way back. But you know, you can take a sheep around the corner, and he's lost. And God says that the man of God, you know what? I'm just telling you what the Lord said. He called all of us sheep. So the fact that sheep goes astray does not negate that he is not ruling well. Oh, come on, help me in here if you can. He, he says, I'm watching. He said that he would be counted worthy of the honor. But now, notice God's desire. He says his desire is this, that the saints yeah, yeah. will count him worthy of double honor. The saints, you and I, the one who have been set aside, the one who's been called out, that we will count him worthy of double honor. Right. Now watch this. He uses the word axiao, which literally means that we would deem him fit or worthy, or that we would deem him suitable. Are you with me? But now notice the grammatical structure of the text is in the present tense. Present tense is continuous, so picture or action is often translated as a way of life. And Romero, God is saying, I want you as a way of life. He says, deem the man of God worthy if he's leading you well. Now I got one question for you. Does, he's been here 16 years. Has he been leading you well? Come on, y'all scaring me in here. He, he's been here for 16 years. Has he been guiding you the right way? Come on, that, that's a little better. He, he, he's been here 16 years. Has he been teaching you the right way? And God says, if he's been guiding you, if he's been teaching you, God says, you and I got to consider him worthy of the belong. Now watch this. Watch, watch the text, though. Not only is it in the present tense, but it's in the imperative mood. Imperative mood suggests the idea of it's a command from God. This is not something that I do when I feel like it. This is not something I do when I don't feel like it. This is not based on how he makes me feel. It's not based on my emotion. It doesn't based on if I like him this week or if I don't like him next week. It's based on the fact. I wish I had a friend in this house. It's based on the fact if he's leading well. Are you with me? It's not based on if I like his ponytail this week, but I don't like his ponytail next week. It's based on if he's leading well. Are you with me? He, he, he said it ain't based on how I feel. It's not based on my emotions. It's not based on if I don't have nothing else to do. God says, I am commanding that you do this 